In this episode, you're going to learn about something called static properties and methods inside optic or into PHP programming. Now, when we talk about static properties and methods, this is a subject that a lot of people get very confused about when they need to use static properties and methods. You might be very tempted to keep using statics instead of simply using objects that you can create from classes. And it's very important for me to point out when to use which, you know, when to use a static and when to use an object that you create from a class. When we talk about static properties and methods, essentially we're talking about going inside a class, creating a property or creating a method that we can simply access without having to create an object first. And now you might be thinking, wow, that sounds like a good idea. You know, properties and methods, we don't have to worry about allocating memory, instantiating the class, creating objects. It's so easy, we just simply reference to them. But no, because static properties and methods are used differently than properties and methods are inside classes. So let me go ahead and explain the differences here. Now, the thing about using statics is that you need to ask yourself, do I need to call this method or this property without creating an object first? Because we have to remember, what is the purpose of creating an object? Well, the purpose is, is that the class is a template. And in some cases, I might want to create many different objects of many different people. I might create a Daniel, I might create a Timmy, a John, a Lisa, a something. You might have a lot of different people we want to create here. So if I were to take a look at this class here, it makes sense that all these people, all these objects I create from this class might have a different name. They might have different eye colors, different ages. Um, these different methods here will then re reference to these properties that all the different people have. Therefore, these also need to be regular methods. But in some cases, I might want to create a property or method that isn't directly linked to creating an object from this class. To kind of show you what I mean here, let me go ahead and create a static. So if I were to create a static property inside this class called person, I could say that we have something called a, let's just give it a public static. We use the static keyword here to make it into a static. And I might call this one drinking age and set it equal to something like 21. Because I know in the US, the drinking age is 21. And since a lot of my viewers are Americans, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it 21. Here in Denmark, we don't have a drinking age. I know in other countries it's 18, some even 16, but for the American people, drinking age is 21. So setting the drinking age to 21 is going to be a universal thing for all the different people that I create this object of. It doesn't matter if it's Daniel, Timmy, or Lisa, all the people have a drinking age that is set to 21. That means we can create this into a static because it's not essential to make this part of an object, if that makes sense. So what I can do here now is I can actually go inside my index file and instead of simply creating an object, actually, if I were to create an object, I can't access a static property from inside the class because it's not part of the object I created. So we do need to not create an object in the first place. I don't have to. I just simply need to create a reference to the class, which is person, write colon colon, which is how we, instead of the pointy arrow we used in the last episode, we use colon colon to access static properties and methods. So I can use colon colon and then type the name. And in this case, we do need to reference to the variable because it's not actually a property of an object, so we do need to use the variable symbol in front of here. And I'm gonna to reference to drinking age. So now if I were to actually echo this inside the browser, you can see we get, well, we get an error. <laughs> now I did actually forget to put a variable symbol in front of my static property, so make sure you remember to do that. If you did it, good for you, <laughs> I just didn't do it. So putting that in front of here, let's go ahead and go inside the browser. Refresh, and as you can see, we get 21. So we can actually access this property without having to create an object first, which is kind of neat. So what we can do is I can also create a method that is also a static method. So I can go and create this one down here. I can say we have a public static, and I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one, well, we need to say function first, but then we're gonna give it some kind of name. I can call this one a get 
Actually, no, let's set a new drinking age. So set drinking age, parentheses, curly brackets. Now, when I need to reference to a static property, I can do it inside either one of the regular methods I've in here. We can also do that because it's static, which means that we can access it from anywhere. So I can do that from inside the get name regular method if I wanted to. Uh, but we can also go down inside the static method, which I can also access from anywhere without having to create an object first. So what I can do here is I can write self colon colon and then I can write the name of my property. So in this case, it is drinking age. And what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and pass in a parameter. So I'll say we want to pass in new dr for drinking age. That's an, that's an A. <laughs> so new DA to kind of cut it short there. Um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and set this one equal to the new drinking age. So what I can do is I can actually go inside my index file. I can say we have person, colon, colon. And then I can say we have a static method. And this one is called new drinking age, parentheses. And I can simply pass in a new age. So let's say we're somewhere else in Europe. It is 18. And now if we were to actually echo this out one more time, you'll notice that we changed it to 18. Whoops, we have another <laughs> another error. Ah, okay, yeah, we need to make sure we use the same name, of course, for the, the static method. So if we were to go in here, it is not new drinking age, it is set drinking age, okay? I make a lot of errors in this episode, but I think it's okay, because a lot of you guys are pretty smart, so you catch a lot of these errors. So while I'm making them, you fix them. So as you can see, we now have 21, and we have 18, because I'm echoing it out before we change it, and after we change it. So just to show you, let's actually go and go back here. Because I want to show you the whole, we can access static uh, properties from regular methods as well. So if we were to create a new object based off this class, the static properties of methods are not gonna be part of this object, but they don't have to, because we can access them without needing to create an object from them. And you might be asking, well, why do we put them inside this class here if they don't become part of an object when we create it? It's just simply because we categorize it. So right now, we have a class called person. And in my head, I think that the drinking age should be part of the person class because it kind of belongs under that category. So I can actually put it inside this class and have it in here together with the properties and methods that gets created when we create an object. So don't get confused about the fact that we mix together statics and non-statics inside classes. They are two different things, essentially, but they're just put together because they are categorized under the same class name, okay? So what I can do here is I can go inside, get, let's not get the name, but instead let's get drinking age. So get DA. And I can go ahead and instead of returning this name, because this is a property and what we want to get is a static property, is I can go ahead and again refer to self, which again is another keyword that references to this class. Instead of using variable this, when it comes to statics, we use self. So reference to self, and then what is it called? Because this time I want to get it correct, without errors, please. Uh, so we're gonna set it to drinking age. And when we return this, I can go inside and reference to get DA. Just gonna copy it so I don't make a mistake again. And I'm just simply gonna get the get DA function or method from inside the class. So if we were to actually run this, go inside, you can see we get 21. So we can access static properties from regular non-static methods in order to get some values here. So with all this said, I think this is pretty much what I wanted to show when it comes to statics. And I hope that you understood the purpose behind the statics uh, because a lot of people, like I said, get confused about when do we use statics and when do we use non-statics. Like, should we just make all the properties and methods inside a class a static method because then we could just access it from anywhere. We don't need to create objects first, but that's the kind of attitude that tells me that people don't understand what the purpose is behind creating objects. So make sure you understand that static properties and methods are used when you want to create properties and methods that don't have to be part of an object. Like it doesn't have to be in there. So then you can make it static.
Okay, so this is all I want to show in this episode. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.